I've been playing video games since I was two years old, starting on a ColecoVision that we used to have. We got a Nintendo Entertainment System a few months before I turned four, and it was this system that truly indoctrinated me into video games. My brothers and I rented and owned many different NES games during its life cycle, and I often played many of these games by other means as a teenager and adult. This video will highlight what I believe are the 10 best NES video games. These ratings are based on weighted totals for gameplay, audio, visuals, storytelling, and my own general nostalgia and favorability. Just because these are some of my favorite video games, this shouldn't take away from your own personal feelings on what you believe are the best games on the system. One surprise for myself was the fact that none of the three Final Fantasy games for the NES and Famicom cracked my top 10. This is my favorite video game series of all time. But this didn't change the fact that, for example, the first game was buggy, such as spells that just didn't work at all, and grindy, the second's stat progression was abysmal, and the third is grindy as well, along with the last dungeon itself being extremely long with no save points. So here is my top 10 NES games of all time. I'm starting off the list with a strong entry, Super Mario Bros. 2 The USA Edition. This is a great game for being an official hack from Nintendo. While it is a version of Japanese game Doki Doki Panic that has been Marioized, many of the staff that made this original version were first-party Nintendo employees like Shigeru Miyamoto. He, of course, is the main creator for the Super Mario and Legend of Zelda series. The differences between Mario, Luigi, Toad, and the Princess really helped make the game fun. As a kid, I enjoyed easy mode of using Luigi and Princess's safe jumps, but as I got older, I found myself preferring to use the quicker but harder to handle Mario and Toad. This variability added some replay value to the game and often made me wish it had more levels. The colorful art style and sprites as well as the catchy tunes really add to the experience. If this were a top 15 list, then the first entry to the series would have been included. As it is, the second entry of Ninja Gaiden improves upon the first in many different ways. One such addition that adds an interesting dimension to gameplay are the Shadow Clones or Phantom Doubles that can be created. The story still manages to be strong with amazing cinematics for its time and the music continues to be fantastic as well. The game itself also tones down the difficulty from the first game, making it probably one of the most approachable games in the series. While the Paris Printer level 3-2's music theme is the most remixed song in this game, I've always been partial to Snowstorm level 2-2's theme as you can see here. I'm just as surprised as you are to see this game so high up on my own ratings. Dr. Mario, however, is a fantastic Tetris clone and puzzle game. Setting up chains and patterns for maximum scoring can be a lot of fun, all the while the fever theme gets indelibly stuck in your head. The two-player versus mode was also a lot of fun, clearing the screen before your opponent while sending them garbage in turn. I do wish puzzle games like this back in the NES era had the ability to save high scores. And honestly, I do believe the combined Tetris and Dr. Mario game together for the SNES is a better product for many of the features that that game had over this one. Nevertheless, I had a lot of fun playing this game and trying to clear uh, viruses, viri, viri, out with the help of Dr. Mario. I love Zelda 2 Adventure of Link. It is probably one of my all-time favorite games, but due to a lot of issues that game has, I don't think it is one of the best games on the NES. As odd as it might sound, Crystalis is the sequel to the original Zelda that Adventure of Link should have been. It takes RPG mechanics like the leveling up system that Zelda 2 had, but it keeps the top-down perspective that the original Zelda had. The spells and crystals have functions pretty much throughout the entire game, whereas over half of Zelda 2's spells are niche at best, only having functions a few times throughout its game. Crystalis has a compelling story based in a post-apocalyptic world where the main character does not remember his past and must journey forward in a linear fashion through different areas in the game world. One of the few gripes I have with this game is that it is possible to initiate boss battle where none of your weapons can damage them due to your character being too low a level. The game also doesn't allow you to escape these battles either, and thus you must stay there and accept your death. Mm, unless you use the fun second controller teleport cheat, which also adds more fun in other game progression breaking ways. Overall, this is a fun and great RPG adventure with a wonderful soundtrack as well.
Video games based on cartoons, TV shows, and movies have varied success. For the NES, some examples of good ones include Batman, Chippendale Rescue Rangers, and the subjectively good Fester's Quest, while one easy example of a bad one would be Back to the Future. What could be seen as arguably the best NES video game based on a cartoon is DuckTales. The platforming is a lot of fun along with the nifty pogo stick mechanic, the visuals are bright and colorful, as well as having a great soundtrack, Moon's theme for the win. It also has a Mega Man-like stage selection option to choose one of the five stages. The fact that it only has five stages highlights one of the game's few negatives. It's much too short. This game's legacy is responsible for an unmemorable sequel and a remaster that doesn't get as much credit as it deserves. Super Mario Bros. is the Mario game that started it all, and it can be seen as the lifeline that saved the video game industry in the US. For its time, the platforming was sharp, audio fantastic, and controls tight and unparalleled. I'll always remember the first night we got the system and marveled at how my brothers got to the 1-4 castle, managing to dodge all sorts of hazards and open pits to get through that level. Looking back now, this ended up being a drop in the pan for difficulty that I as a player and Mario would go through together. If there are any flaws with the game, it is the inability to move the screen back once forward progression has been made, as well as some of the jumps being restrictive compared to future Mario games, such as Mario jumping on enemies not resulting in a large hop that was introduced in the third iteration. Regardless of these issues, the game is still fun to play, which is probably why I also like playing this and Mario Bros. 2 Japan lost levels in the US so much. Mega Man 3 is the second best game in the series, as it sports interesting levels and bosses, continues the great overall gameplay of the series, and also has a fantastic soundtrack. The slide, performed by holding down and hitting A while on the ground, was also introduced in this game, and it became a series staple in all the games released after this one. This also introduced both Rush the Robot Dog as Mega Man's sidekick, as well as Mega Man's brother, Proto, or Break, Man. The Doc Robots added as in-betweens from beating the eight Robot Masters, but before confronting Dr. Wily, almost make the game feel a bit too long, while also making it difficult to try and guess which Mega Man 3 weapon power works on which Mega Man 2 boss, assuming you don't have a guide. There can also be some frame rate slowdown issues when there are too many sprites on the screen, but this is more of an NES issue than an issue with the game. Mega Man continued in numbers 4 through 6 on the NES. While those were decent games, they felt more cookie cutter than anything. This is the puzzle game that all future puzzlers are measured by, including any and all future versions of Tetris on additional platforms. And when I refer to Tetris, I mean the Nintendo version and not the Tengen Atari one. The latter form had a few more different gameplay modes, but the Nintendo one sported smoother gameplay and better scoring overall. I also prefer the colors in the Nintendo one anyway. Everything about Tetris to me is interesting. The fact that I still play it today in the form of Tetris 99 on the Nintendo Switch, the tournaments for this original NES version that still go on today that are fun to watch online, the story of how Tetris was invented, and how I personally worked to improve my own play as a kid to try and beat my various family members' scores. These are just some of many examples of why this is such a great game, and it doesn't even touch upon its simple, elegant, and ingenious design. These last two games are so good that I have to have two games in the number one slot. Mega Man 2 is not only what I think is the best NES game of all time, it is also one of my all-time favorites. This game encompasses perfection in both Mega Man and platforming. It greatly improves upon the difficulty from the tough to beat first game, adding in an easier normal mode for the US version, has a varied and colorful set of stages and bosses, and a great majority of all of Mega Man's powers he gains have use and function throughout the game. This also has the best soundtrack out of all the mainline Mega Man games. The first stage of Dr. Wily's Castle is the best song in the whole game, nay, the whole series. Go ahead and fight me on this. I also love how in this game, beating the Robot Masters doesn't solely rely on a weapon they're weak against, and many of Mega Man's powers do varying damage to all the Robot Masters. Unfortunately, this is something that future games abandoned the series as they went on. This game was reason enough to own an NES, and I highly recommend picking up the Mega Man Legacy Collection on any current gen console or PC that you own to acquire and play this gem.
The third Mario Brothers game is not my favorite Mario game of all time, but rest assured, it is rated very high up on my list. Barring a couple glitches here and there in this game, it is pretty much flawless. One issue that I have with it now is that I feel some of the levels are very short, but this could be because now I've played this game so much that I know every level's ins and outs and I can find my way to the end of stages so quickly. I'm amazed to think how much was added to the Mario formula and how much was improved from the last game, especially considering the last game before this one was a much harder sequel to Super Mario Bros. Again, lost levels in the US. Miyamoto and his team gave Mario 4 additional power-ups, the Koopalings, 90 total levels, the ability to move back where you came, vertical stage movement, automatically moving stages, and the list can go on and on. This game is the gold standard for Mario games and general platforming, and it helped to shape not only the other Mario games released after it, but other platforming games not related to the Mario series as well. So what are your favorite video games for the NES? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Thanks for listening and have a great day.